Hey creatives, I'm playing with acrylic paints today and I'm going to use them a little bit like watercolours in my Strathmore Mixed Media Journal. Or perhaps more accurately I should say I'm going to use them like a hybrid of watercolour and acrylic paint. Hopefully it will become clearer to you as we work through this piece. But before I get cracking, here is a little peek into the artwork that is already in this journal. Now I'm a little random in my journal keeping and have quite a few different books on the go at the same time so the contents are dotted about. Some projects here you'll, you might recognise from my online sharing and I've also got some experiments here where I've just been playing around with different materials. Now this is actually one of my neater art journals which is why I picked it for today's project because I wanted a nice clean blank page. And to start this project off, I'm just going to mask off the borders with some washi tape and I'm using it the exact same technique that I described in my last video where I showed you a trick for using your gel printing plates on your card blanks. Did you see that video? If you didn't, I have a link to it in the cards and also in the description, so don't forget to watch that one too. Now I've picked my paints today by colour combo as this project is really led by colour. I haven't got a finished project in mind but I know that I want to layer up hot and cold colours and get that lovely translucent look that you would normally get with watercolour paint. So that is pretty much my starting point for this project. Now for those of you who've seen a few of my videos you'll know that I don't really have a full set of one brand of paints. I do tend to mix and match my products as well as my artwork but you'll find that I've listed all the brands plus the colours that I've used below the video in the description. Now I've not wetted my paper first, but I am adding wet colour next to wet colour in some areas and I might add more water in places to get drips to form. So if we get runs and colours merging into each other then that's great. Now to get a more translucent watercolour effect with your acrylic paints, you do need to thin them out quite considerably. So I'm using them very thinly and I'm thinning them out first with water. The great thing about using acrylics instead of watercolours in a piece like this is that the colours will remain bright even when dry. Watercolours tend to dry lighter than you see them as they are wet. And once the layer is dry, you can add more layers over top without disturbing that previous layer, which is kind of great for what I want to do here. So you'll have spotted that I'm using a flat brush today rather than the usual round or mop brush that I like to use. Now there's no real reason for this other than it's what I felt like doing for this piece. But it does mean that the colour will go down a little blockier with a squarer look and I'm happy with that for this project. But thinking about your brush size and shape and changing it for different types of looks that you want to achieve is worth considering. I do often reach for my mop brush as it is one of my favourites. So I try to break out of that habit sometimes and go for something different if the project allows for it. So this project took around 40-50 minutes to do and that doesn't include when I just left it to dry naturally instead of using my heat tool. So I have time lapsed it as you can tell, but if you aren't sure what I'm doing or you would like to know something in more detail then please just feel free to ask any questions and I'll answer them and I might even do a video to answer them if that helps. After my first layer of hot colours have dried I added some pen texture with ballpoint pens. So these are just ordinary ballpoint pens that you'd get in your office supplies and I've got them in an assortment of different ink colours. I really love how the ballpoint pen draws and I enjoy doodling and drawing with it but I must admit that I have no idea of how light fast the inks are so do keep this in mind if you are using ballpoint pens too. This piece is going to stay in my art journal so it isn't a big issue and if I do ever decide to sell it then what I would do is I would make prints of it rather than sell the original piece. So that's how I would get around the potential light fast issues. 
Now there are a couple of fun things about using ballpoint pens. First is that it's dry and fixed so you can layer over the top pretty much immediately unless you're unlucky and get one of those little ballpoint pen ink splotches, you know the sort of thing I mean? If I spot that forming on my tip then I'll tend to just clean it off before I start drawing. If I don't then it's just one of those things that happens. But the second and more interesting thing is that ballpoint pens leave a little texture groove on the paper which I'm sure you've probably noticed before. And if you dry brush paint over the top you can get some really interesting looks. Okay, perhaps this is only the sort of thing that I find interesting being such a creative nerd. But if you like that sort of thing too, then try it out on different papers and using different pen pressures and see what effects you can get. Once I'm happy with the pen work, it's second layer time and I'm going to go with a darker and colder colour for this layer just to add a bit more drama with those contrasts. And for this layer I'm going a little thicker too in some areas. And that's so that I can build up an opaque layer but I've softened my edges by making them thinner with water. So there will be a little bit of a colour change as the turquoise and Payne's grey tailor off into that hot colour of the first layer. And this did take a few light layers to, to do and I also mixed in a bit more drama with some red drips and splatters as well. I think it's starting to look a bit like clouds developing in a sunset to me. What do you think? Let me know what it makes you think of, I would love to hear. And whilst you're at it, if you are enjoying my video then please do like it. I would be hugely grateful. And of course don't forget to become a subscriber as well for a twice weekly hit of art, tips, tutorials, inspiration from me on Wednesdays and Sundays. And if you hit the notification bell too, you will get an update so you don't miss my next video. It's definitely getting there for me but it needs a bit more detail so I'm using undiluted acrylic paint to add some dots and then I'll just add some more detail with a black ink ballpoint pen. Once I've carefully and slowly removed that washi tape, you'll be able to see the finished piece as it's meant to be seen with the border.
ballpoint pens are simple and effective on this piece, don't you think? I could have used a paint pen or a line marker, but well, one, I just don't have the colours that I wanted in those pens, and two, I do really like that extra texture and, and the fine line that you can get with a ballpoint. I have a feeling that I'll do some more of this style. It definitely warrants some more exploration. Meanwhile, I need your help. I haven't got a name for this piece. Can you give me some suggestions? You guys are so good at titles. It's a skill I really need to get better at. So if you're hungry for some more art inspiration, then try out these videos and I will see you in a few days time. Thank you for joining me today.